Woof. Hey guys, Porcupine Hair here. Today I am reading another two chapters on that trash book I made when I was 13 called Thundercrack. So, uh, wish me luck guys because I don't think I can get through this without dying. Okay, so currently we are up to, uh, up to the chapter called Rage of the Garn Terror, which is chapter 5. If you want to check out the previous videos in this series, then go ahead and do so as you're going to need a bit of context for this scene. You need to read up a bit. You need to read into the lore of the Thundercrack universe. Okay, so let's begin with chapter 5. One Garnter became the head, and another two became the arms, and their mouths split up and became fingers. Then another became the stomach, then another two became legs, and their mouths split up again to become toes. Then the final garter went on its back and spread out its wings, which meant that we had to fight a 250 foot tall monster that could fly. Wow! Then I saw a cannonball hit the monster in the head, and it responded by shooting a giant mist back at where it was shot. Everywhere there were screams of fire, fire, or nearly got it that time, keep firing those cannons. And soon it erupted into a battlefield of cannonballs and mists coming from left and right. It turned out that even though the mouths were split, they could still shoot mist. Even if their fingers, apparently. Whoa! I tried to fly away from the battlefield with Luke and Farborn, but then I became the centre of the fight. You're just a flipping coward, mate. You're just running away from this thing that's threatening hundreds of people's lives. Yeah, don't mind me, guys. Just... Pfft. Cannons and mist were flying at me from every direction, so I dodged side to side, trying not to get hit by anything. We need to find a safe place to hide, I shouted to Luke. What about over there, Luke shouted, pointing to a cavern a few yards away from us. Just then the gown terror stepped on top of the cavern. We need to get away quickly before the rocks hit us, I said in an alarm voice. So, while avoiding the obstacles flying at us, we flew to some trees that would shelter us from everyone's sight. We should be safe here, I said. But what about those people? They might need some help, Luke said. They're probably as bad as those things that are fighting them. They probably would have, would have of, would have of eaten me if I didn't escape, I said. Then Farborn just started running back to the town and took off into the sky. Farborn, I shouted at her angrily. What are you doing? You're going to get us killed. I have to save my previous owners, I heard a scaly voice say. You can talk, I said to Farborn. Why didn't you do it earlier? You could have answered some questions. I was waiting for a time when there wouldn't be so many demons around, she said. Wh when were there demons? Uh, I'm pretty sure there are only weird little garter things. Then we flew across a city on fire that was half destroyed. This is what happened to the capital of all the elf cities, Lanka, a home to many innocent creatures that was destroyed by a Terror. We could have helped to save this city if you weren't so scared to do it. I think they got the prophecy wrong. You're not the one who saved us from Imantai. You're not the last sage of the Thundercrack. Many died trying to protect the wrong person. <clears throat> You're right, Farborn, I said. It's my entire fault. I should have been there to help. Should have. I wasn't there when they needed me. But I am now. If I'm the real sage of the Thundercrack, then I can beat the Garn Terror. Then I stepped back a bit and started running, and then I jumped off Farborn and started falling to the ground. You stupid beast, Luke said. Because of you, we're going to lose Mike. Look what you made him do. He's going to get himself killed. Don't talk, she replied. Just watch. Come on, I said. Why can't I fly? If I'm the real sage of the Thundercrack, then allow me to fly. Whoever told you that you could fly? No one told you you could fly. You just said, hey, guys, I, I can control lightning. I must be able to fly. Jump off a building. <laughs> hit the ground. He's dead. No one saved them now. They're all going to die. Happy birthday, everyone! Satan is here! Then my eyesight faded, and I heard a deep voice say, Fly, Sage of the Thundercrack, and use your power to defeat the beast. Use the power of infuriating mode. <laughs> what is that? What is that name, infuriating mode? Oh, why did I ever think this is alright? Why? 
Then I started to feel an electric pulse go through me, and hundreds of little lightning bolts started surging from me. And I felt 20 times faster, and felt myself flying. Then I shouted at nothing, and said, Try to fight me now, because with the power of the Thundercrack, I'll defeat you and your leader. Well, it's not really shouting at nothing, are you? You're shouting at the, towards the Gun Terror. So it's not really shouting at nothing. Chapter 6. Infuriating mode. <laughs> Let's get into this. Let's see what happens when he goes into infuriating mode. Now guys, at the time, I was really into Avatar The Last Airbender. So I pretty much ripped it off. With the elemental abilities, infuriating mode, which is basically Avatar, the Avatar State. Avatar State is way better. I, I love Avatar. It's such a cool series. I started flying to where I thought the Garn Terror was because I knew that I had to avenge Lanka and destroy the monster. I'd never felt so strong and I felt wiser. Maybe this was what infuriating mode was. Or maybe it only happens when you're angry. No. 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 Okay. You don't get wiser. When you're angry, you get dumber or more rash. So what you're saying is completely unfounded. I was flying like a bullet, and in a few minutes I had the Garn Terror in my line of sight, and I watched in horror as it chomped its horrible mouth down on an elf. What am I doing, I told myself. This is crazy. I shouldn't be fighting it. No, I need to avenge the people. I was getting closer and I could feel its hot breath and see its ghastly face. Then it must have heard me as it spun around and whipped me with its tail. I was getting ready for my terrifying descent when I heard an ear piercing scream and saw its tail wriggling on the ground like a worm and realised that I had burned a hole through its tail. Then to my horror watched as it grew another tail. Then it shot a mist at me and I shot a thunderbolt at its face but to no effect. This beast has fought many battles but this will be its last I thought to myself. Think, Mike, think. You know how sometimes you try to think about something so hard that you forget about it. This was one of those times. That's actually that's actually a good description. Wow, I didn't expect I didn't expect myself to use something like that. Usually I'm more straightforward with my writing. In this I must have just thought, hey, that's a good thing to put down and it's alright. I tried to think what to do, I nearly had it when a giant black fist came hurtling towards me and I was struck straight in the stomach and hit the ground with a hard thud that shook the earth around me. Un, ow, mmm, I said while drifting slowly in and out of consciousness, when suddenly I felt better and got up and started wondering what had happened when I saw a house in the distance that looked like a temple. I was still bleeding from my previous accident and my vision was blurry. I hobbled over to the building as fast as my injured state could take me, even though every bone in my body was broke. <laughs> was broke. <laughs> as opposed to was broken, I mean, it should have been was broken, but... Was broken is fine, guys. <sighs> I felt like a pebble that had been crushed by two giant rocks, but I knew that for some reason I had to get to that mysterious house, like it was pulling me to it. I wasn't paying attention to my friend's cries when I suddenly felt an immense pain in my back and started flying towards the house at great speed. Then I crashed through the stone wall and felt like every bone in my body popped out of its sockets. I was on the brink of death and I could barely move, but then I saw a great golden staff in the centre and I used all of my strength to get to it. Then, for a third time, I saw the beast's arm crash through the ceiling and hit me where I last was. A hit that would have killed me, but I rolled over just in time, but then the beast had a second try at me. With only seconds till it killed me, I jumped up to the stone table the staff was on, and grabbed the staff and pointed it high up into the air. Then I saw a giant thunderbolt flow out of the staff and, com and completely disintegrate its arm. Now we're playing by my rules, I shouted up at the one-armed beast. This is when it starts to get personal. This, this Mike reminds me of Sonic. I don't know why. He literally has the attitude of Sonic. He has the attitude of a 90s kid. Why did I give him that attitude? Who knows? He's definitely not a likeable character. And I really hate him. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this another video. This another video on uh, my book that I wrote in year three. Three? No, not year three. What am I saying? I wrote it in year six. Yeah, I started in year six. Anyway, this this is a really bad book. I hope you are enjoying this series. If you are, make sure to leave a like and uh, some support on my channel if you enjoy my videos. If you do, uh, consider 
subscribing if you haven't already, or just comment, share with your friends. Help me be able to reach 100 subscribers, because that would be quite awesome. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take care. Have a good one.